Hi there guys, my name is Jacob and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I am going to go through with you my August solar stats. But before I do that, there has been a lot of new subscribers to the channel lately. So I am just going to run you through um, what my solar and battery system consists of for anybody that doesn't know. So my system is a 5.7 kilowatt system. It consists of 13 440 watt panels. They're all fitted with Tigo optimizers to help with any shading that happens in certain months of the year. Um, I have a Give Energy 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter that is a generation three model. And I have a 9.5 kilowatt battery Again, give energy and it is a generation three model. So that just gives you an overall rundown of the system that I have. Now, before I get into the stats, I just want to say there is a link down in the description box of this video. If you are looking to switch energy providers, um, then consider switching to Octopus Energy. There is a link down below, as I said, with a referral link that gives you £50 if you use it. And I also get £50 too. Um, now, energy prices have gone up lately. That is due to the energy price cap increasing just before winter. Almost, you know, you could predict that happening. Um, so if you are on the standard tariff and you are affected by that price cap, please consider switching onto a cheaper fixed deal. There are a lot of cheaper deals on the market at the moment, especially if, as I said, you're on a price cap tariff. You need to get off that and get onto a cheaper fix. So consider using that link below. So as I said, today's video is about the August stats. Now we have to assume that August is going to be a little bit lower than June and July because we're coming to the end of summer now. And, um, you know, daylight hours are reducing ever so slightly every day. And, you know, every month from now on, really, we should be expecting a significant decline. Um, but August is still a summer month and it is still one of the peak solar months. So I'm still hoping that the generation figures are going to be pretty good. Now, I can say for me in the Midlands, August was a, a pretty good month, apart from the very last week of the month. The last week was just an absolute washout, consistent rain and a lot of cloud coverage. So unfortunately, that did affect the figures. But I thought, nevertheless, the figures were pretty impressive. Now, total month generation, 680 kilowatt hours for the month. Now, if we compare that with July's figures, July was 718. So we're talking a roughly 6% drop off from July. But I'll be honest, if we had had a better month, a better week at the end of August, where it wasn't, you know, consistent rain and consistent cloud coverage, I think August would have actually beat July. So I thought that was quite interesting. But nevertheless, a 6% drop off, 680 kilowatt hours for the month. I thought that was pretty good, actually better than I thought it would be because I was expecting at least 10% drop off and that didn't happen. So as I say, I was pretty happy with that. Now, my best day for the month of August was the 17th of August, and that turned out to be 34.3 kilowatt hours for the day. Uh, compared with July's best day, July's was 37 kilowatt hours um, for the best day. So there was a slight, you know, slight drop uh, in the figures for the best day, but still a pretty good day. Nevertheless, 34.3. Funnily enough, though, the worst day of the month was the following day. So the 17th was the best day. The 18th was the worst day. And the 18th was just 9.9 .9 kilowatt hours for the entire day. Um, however, that was better than July's worst day because July's was 8.9. So one kilowatt less for the worst day in July. But nevertheless, less than 10 kilowatts in an entire day for a month of all, you know, for a day in August is pretty low. Um, but thankfully, there weren't too many of those throughout the month. Now, 10 kilowatt hours of my total generation was saved by my Tigo optimizers. And what that basically means for anybody who doesn't know, um, basically my optimizers help with shading. So, for instance, as I said before, when there is a lot of cloud coverage um, in the sky, my panels will, of course, be shaded when the sun is partially out and partially not out. Um, some of the panels will be in sun, some will be in shade. And 
generally speaking, if you don't have optimizers, um, the whole system will drop to the level of the worst performing panel. However, if you have optimizers, the optimizers will kind of make the system run more efficiently and allow the panels in sunlight to still work at their optimum level and that the panels in the shade don't drag down the whole performance of the system. So as I say, across the entire month, they saved me 10 kilowatt hours that would have ultimately just been lost, um, you know, had I not had them. Now, total generation so far for the entire year, and my year starts from the 22nd of January, which is when I had the system installed, up until the end of August, I am up to exactly, well, just, just a tad over 4.6 megawatt hours for the year so far. Now, I am really happy with that, and I'll tell you why. My installers, um, which were Ace Solar Energy, and they are based in Wolverhampton, if anyone is interested. My installers predicted for a 12-month period, my kind of maximum generation would be around the 4.5 megawatt hours. But as I just said, I've already hit 4.6, and there's still September, October, November, December to go. So obviously this year, 2025, has been a really good year for solar so far, because you know, their kind of expected generation figure I've already hit and, you know, surpassed. And I'm hoping if it's, you know, if luck is on my side, if the weather is on my side, I should be pushing into five, in the region of five to six megawatt hours for the year, which I think is really impressive for a 5.7 kilowatt, you know, kilowatt hour system. So yeah, that is my total generation for the year. Now, let's move on to costs for the month of August, because, of course, there are costs. Even though I have a solar system installed, there are still costs, you know, that you have to pay, standing charges, things like that. So let's get into it. Electricity costs for the month of August, this includes the standing charge, um, were £25.67. Now, as I say, that includes the standing charge, but it also includes my costs for buying electricity from the grid and that comes in the form of charging my battery overnight on a very cheap rate. Um, I think it's 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour that I buy from the grid, which obviously is substantially less than the, the normal unit price, which is the normal unit price for anyone on a standard tariff is probably around 25, 26 pence a kilowatt. And I'm buying it for 8.5 pence a kilowatt. Um, so that's a really good rate. Um, but I bought 111 kilowatt hours from the grid. Um, so that will be charging my battery overnight, making sure that it's at 100 percent ready for when the sun comes up so I can maximise my export to the grid. And that's because I export to the grid at 15 pence a kilowatt, nearly double what I'd buy it for. Um, now, my gas bill for the month was £12.60, and that is basically just the standing charge and then a small amount of usage just to heat water for the shower and things like that. But obviously, we didn't put any central heating on in the month of August. So, again, that bill is incredibly low at just £12.60. Now, the really exciting bit that I always love to find out at the end of every month is how much was the export income that my solar generated and I was surprised to see August actually beat July. And I was really surprised at that because my July generation was higher than August. So you would assume I would have exported more. But that's actually not the case. August, I generated less, but I exported more. So I was quite surprised with that. So my export income for the month of August was £92.10. And that was for sending 614 kilowatt hours to the grid. Now, in July, I got an export income of £89.34 for sending 595 kilowatt hours to the grid. So roughly, I sent about 19, nearly 20 kilowatt hours more to the grid in the month of August than I did in July. So I must have, I'm not really sure how that's worked, but maybe I was, I didn't use as much throughout the month and managed to export a little bit more, just kind of maybe a kilowatt or so every day. But obviously that has added up. Um, but I was really excited to see that because I thought my export income would drop again lower than July's. And actually, it just managed to beat it. So I was really happy with that. 
But of course, that is probably going to be the best export income figure I see for, I would imagine, probably the next six months or so, because I'm expecting a big drop off in September. And then, of course, October, November, December, January, February, none of those months are going to beat that kind of figure because obviously it's going to drop off quite a bit in the next few months. So really, I'm going to be looking forward to kind of March and April next year when those kind of figures are like a £90 export income figure for that to come back. But it's going to be interesting in the next few months to see how, you know, how those figures do drop. Because I've never experienced a winter with a solar panel system. As I said, I got my system installed in January, at the very end of January. So I did kind of experience it end of January into February. But by March, it had really picked up and kind of solar generation took off in March. But I don't know how it's going to perform in October, November, December. So even though I know it's not going to be as good as obviously now, I am still excited to kind of keep a track of it and see how well it performs. And of course, this is really when my battery is going to kick in and really play a part in getting me through the winter time when solar generation is at its lowest. But I don't really want to be pulling from the grid if I can help it. And that's where the battery is going to come in. So as I mentioned before, I've got a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery. And I think I am going to be working that pretty hard over the winter. But of course, that is what I bought it for, to make sure that I don't need to pull from the grid, you know, in the daytime and peak hours when it costs the most to do that. So just going back to costs for the month, if we take my export income of £92.10 and we minus off the electric charges and the gas charges, then ultimately that leaves me with a credit to my Octopus account of £54.38. So that is another credit, another month where I do not pay a penny to the energy company because ultimately they owe me. And there's no better feeling than that, really, when you've got a solar panel system working really well for you. The fact that I don't have any energy bills and actually haven't paid an energy bill myself with my own money since I had it installed, which is incredible, really, when you think about it. You know, since January of this year, I have not paid out any money to pay my energy bills. Um, it's all just been paid for through the money that has been generated by the system itself. And I think that is the power of a solar panel and battery system. So there we have it, guys. That is my full August roundup for my solar stats. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what your stats were for the month. And as I mentioned before, if you're considering switching energy providers, you know, or you are looking for a better deal, or you just want to switch to get some free credit, um, you know, to help you with your winter bills, go down into the description box, click that Octopus Energy referral link and switch and £50 will be yours and £50 will be mine too. So if you do that, I just want to say a big thank you in advance. Right then, guys, I will leave it there. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next one.